posting right now. Okay, so I heard some clicks, broadcast live. I see this message that appeared up. Did you see it or? No. Oh yeah, on air, up in the upper left. Okay, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> So let's go back to these questions. Should I open a document uh, or just? Uh... Well, I, I I got it. Uh, I got it. I got got it here. I'm working off this email list of questions. Yes. yes. So um, the first one is aimed at doing an income distribution simulation for this demo. Um, and that is what are the quantitative relationships between the mosquito related product projects so for example for a mosquito scientific instrument system how many mosquito sensors does it take mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, one so two how many would you put in yeah, so uh, you know, the I think uh, the original idea was to have mosquitoes goes in a bo uh, go in a box with at least two or three uh, sensors, uh, and if we have more types of transducers, then uh, you know you probably put two of each uh, or choose among the um, variety that you have. Some of them that are suited for that particular application, but it's a case by case thing, and we we have to remember that uh, transducers do break, and these are uh, consumables. These are things that uh, need to be replaced because they're very very okay. fragile. Not because we designed them to be fragile, but they're designed to measure very very small forces, and if you if human scale forces will break them, and and you know normal use in labs, I think the people will break them. So mm -hmm. they need to be uh, replaced. So this is okay. this is actually a consumable item that that will be replaced, uh, you know, once in a while. Yep. Uh, there is another thing. Uh, we still don't know what is the lifetime of every transducer, and uh, we're gonna do that at Fields uh, Lab in Fields Lab. We're gonna do the IKEA test. You know, we're gonna put a piezo on transducers and drive them for days and weeks just to see. Uh, you know, in, in different mediums, um, in, you know, in solutions and in air, and drive them to see uh, how their mechanical properties will, you know, uh, be maintained or, or if they degrade in time. So uh, there is also, um, um, you know, a wear uh, issue here that we need to, to assess. People might break it, and they might just wear in time, and they need to be changed. Okay. Okay, so I take a couple of things from that. One is that you would include more than one sensor in yeah. a kit. Uh, the other is that the the scientific instrument systems will be uh, custom configurations. In, in, in other words, in other words, the, the the types of sensors that would be included would would, would vary. Uh, um, case by case, at least at this point, at th this stage. So, um, okay, now when you're, uh, okay, let's go down to the transducers. Now, you have listed a bunch of different transducers from, uh, uh, it, it, it looks like the ones that are getting the most work are the joint type transducers. Um, the evanescent wave transducer, and then it goes down to the radial transducer and the constriction transducer, and there ain't nothing happen on a 2D strain transducer at this stage. Mm -hmm. But but you've got a now for for a sensor, does a sensor have one or more than one transducer? Uh, <clears throat> actually, uh, a transducer can be can, transducers can be uh, changed uh, and work with the same electronic um, <clears throat> device for you know measuring and and conditioning the the signal. So you have mm -hmm. the, you have the electronics of of the thing and and you know laser photodiode the electronics to read the photodiode current and to do some signal conditioning and, and to digitize it. 
how that unit can work with different types of transducers uh, that are, uh, you know, that, that work in intensity modulation, okay? Uh, if the detection is based on intensity modulation, you can put any transducer into these, uh, you know, mosquitoes, electronics. And the, I think we need, to <laughs> we need to clarify the language here. So what we call a mosquito is the electronics and a transducer, okay? Um, so you have the transducer, which are different types of optical fiber that are sensitive to bending. Uh, most of them are based on modulation of intensity, mm -hmm. and that is it through the fast photodiode. Then you might go into some more uh, complex transducers that work uh, on, uh, you know, based on interference of light. And, and then your acquisition system is different. You might want to use a CCD camera instead of just a one fast photodiode. Uh, so signal processing would be something else, you know, and, and that would require a whole different set of electronics. Uh, but for now, we just want to go with these very simple basic intensity modulation transducers, which can be of different types. Okay, joint type, which is, like you say, the, the most um, active uh, in terms of, you know, work that we put in. Uh, I think the next one that is coming would be the constriction transducer because we almost have all the setup in place to start playing with it. The evanescent wave, I think, will come in fourth and third. I think it's something that will come, up, uh, come out of Maxime's lab, which we call the intrinsic uh, you know, uh, transducer, or intrinsically sensitive tra transducers. He makes some uh, exotic optical fiber that are intrinsically sensitive to bending, uh, and they will come in third place, probably even second, second or third place. So. Um. Okay. Okay. So, so, what what I'm taking from this is that that the uh, transducer is um, it, 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 okay. The sensor can plug in different transducers. Yeah. Same sensor, different transducers. Exactly. Uh, and so that that the transducers then would require, a different transducer would require different electronics. So there's some other parts of the, of the instrument system that would come along with different transducers. Uh, and would, would, I, would, it, is, would it also be correct to say that the, uh, that the transducers would also be um, uh, uh, configurable at this point. In other, in other words, somebody you know, somebody wants to do because you're you're working with lab experiments at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so okay, somebody's gonna somebody's gonna specify that I want to do this type of experiment. Therefore, I would need um, these types of transducers and these types of uh, electronics to go along with them, and that might be different from the next experiment in the next lab. Correct. Yes. <clears throat> so yeah. okay. when, when you go into this market, you know, uh, scientific instrumentation, there's a lot of variability in the market because everyone has its own setup, okay? Everyone is, is really individual, and they need to be addressed on an individual basis. Um, now, you said something before, and I, and I want to make a, a, a small correction there. Um, all these four types of transducers, joint type, constriction, intrinsic, and evanescent wave, they require the same type of electronics. These are all one category. Oh, they do? OK. Yeah. OK. There's other type of transducers. For example, multi-core fiber transducers. Uh, you might have, um, I, I just want to name it just, just for, for reference. Um, you have uh, Bragg fiber type transducers. These sometimes require um, interferometry. OK. Um, this mm -hmm. is the detection system is the it's the detection of a change in the interference pattern of the light. That requires a CCD camera. It's a whole uh, different electronic setup, okay, for detection. So that is another category. But we haven't, these projects haven't, uh, they're not part of Sensorica uh, yet because nobody has worked on them. Uh, don't okay. Have the, the means to work on them. Uh, maybe we'll start working on them in a few months from now, but so, so we can forget about that category there. Okay, how about the XYZ positioner? How does that fit in? Yeah, so uh, this is a very 
cheap, low-cost solution to micro-positioning. And most of labs, they do have uh, such equipment. Some of this equipment is piezo-based. Other equipment like that, it's, it's hydraulic, OK? Uh, and people do have, it's very expensive. Uh, it does more than what most of the people, most of labs uh, need, OK? So we're coming now with a very low cost solution that does only positioning. That means that we cannot control acceleration of the movement and speed of the movement quite well, but we can precisely place something from point A to point B. OK? okay. Uh, and most of the people, this is, this is what they need. They don't need to, to control acceleration and speed. Uh, and people pay tens of thousands of dollars for very, very, uh, you know, uh, um, complex piezo systems, okay, that do all that, and, and they don't exploit uh, the, the whole potential of, of, of this instrument. So we're offering something in the range of, you know, uh, hundreds, maybe $1,000, okay, that can uh, do precise micro-positioning, okay, very low cost, uh, does what most people need to do, and um, and these things. So these are the sort of the hands of the mosquito, uh, because the mosquito handles single cells. You need to manipulate single cells, and if you do that with your own hand, uh, you know there's going to be too much motion. You, you can't grab stuff with your hand, basically. Okay? Even if you have uh, some mechanical devices to scale down your motion, once you touch something that is on the microscope, uh, you will induce vibration, uh, you know, and, and the operation okay. is not possible. Yeah. So there are essential tools for using the mosquito. Some people do have them, and, mm -hmm. and so they're not necessarily sold with the mosquito, but they can be, okay? If okay, somebody so this doesn't would... have... Th this would this would be like an optional uh, component of a uh, instrument system. Yes. And would uh, uh, if 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 they would have use these, how many would they get? With normally they, instrument system. Normally they two. Two. Yes. Normally they okay. two per instrument. Two hands. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, is it something that is that something that you might also sell as a separate product? Yeah, so we are also designing the for Philippe the bath, uh, which is basically a container uh, for the physiological medium uh, that you put the cells. And <clears throat> this container has some electrodes if you want electric simulation. It has some in out uh, you know uh, tubes for e exchange of fluid. It has maybe a cooler or, or you know a, a circulation of some f uh, fluid to heat the medium or to cool it down or to control the temperature. So it's it's a it's a container that has you know temperature control, fluid exchange, and maybe some electrical stimulation stimulation uh, electrodes. Uh, and that container is designed to be placed on top of a microscope. Mm -hmm. okay. And we call this the physiological bath or the bath. Okay, when you see references of the bath, this is what we're talking about. It's this yeah. container that has all these properties. And that can be because now we, we made a 3D model, we design it with the idea to have have it customized for different types of microscopes. You walk into a lab, somebody works with Olympus microscopes, other people work with Tides microscopes, you know, Nikon microscopes, and all these microscopes have different, you know, ways of attaching things to them. So we designed it ba this bath with the idea that, you know, we could rapidly modify it to fit into different types of microscopes in the labs. And the, so the bath can also be a product that could go with, with the mosquito. But again, uh, some people might have such devices already. So now, bath by bath, you mean like b b a t h? Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. Um. Uh, okay. I think that is enough for now for a, a, an under a, 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 an understanding of 
the of the the the, the, the relationships among the products. Um, what I'm going to do with this is I will, um, you know that uh, you know that uh, um, value accounting that that value network diagram. Um, I'll start by by revising the network diagram to to show um, the, the, right now it's it's going down to the lever to the levers and mirrors and stuff like that and I don't think that's useful for a value network uh, uh, it's just going to make it too cluttered mm -hmm. so I'm gonna I'm gonna revise this and I'll, I'm gonna I want to get the uh, um, the the network contributors on the on the diagram um, and some other stuff and so so I'm gonna try to um, I'm, I'm gonna try to revise this and I'll try to use what we discussed um, and there's a bunch of trade-offs in a diagram like this as far as the amount of detail that you can show uh, and the point at which becomes too cluttered to read um, <laughs> So, so this is something that you know. You know, I'm going to take another stab at it, and then I'll run it by you again, and then we'll see. Like, what do we want to do for, not only for demo purposes, but this is also something I think that you can use for explanation. You know, you say, okay, here's 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 an overview of our value network. Um, and you know, over time, we can have some other links from the diagram and so on that uh, that people can dig in, you know, can dig into the details more if they want to. But it will. So it will I'm, I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying to, to imagine how this thing would work. So, <clears throat> uh, in my opinion, I think uh, you know the materials needs to be. Like you did in, in, in your flowchart that you uh, set it as an example, needs to be re related to uh, the task management system. So, uh, and, and the use for us would be to see how things are, how materials flow through Sensorica and what are the important tasks that we have to do related to them. Yeah. So, I think a task that, that is deemed to be important. Are these tasks that put materials together into sub products or products? So, well, <clears throat> yeah, that's. We... A, I, I'm sorry that, that you might need a few different types of representations of this stuff. One would be the the one that's out there right now, and where I'm going to go with it next is going to be more for demonstrations to outsiders. Say so this is our network. You know, here's an overview of our network, and then you're going to need inside views, which get into the details of the material flows. Okay. And but, and, and and the and the 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 work that needs to be done. So okay. those are those are those are going to be those are going to be quite different in the amount of detail and also probably the representation. In, in, in other words, when you go when you go with the flow diagram, there's there's a limit to how much detail you can work with, and and understand. Mm -hmm. So if if the other representation that I put out there was uh, an extended bill, extended bill of manufacturing and procurement, and that is what you would usually use for. Uh, uh, you know, for an overview of material management, I just haven't fleshed it out more. Yeah. But that shows that shows you know who, where you where you can possibly get stuff from. It will also show the amount of you know the 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 work that needs to you know the 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 times types of of uh, of uh, time contributions that would be necessary. Um, you know, it can also get down to how much time it will going to be take, and then there's the other views would be like the timeline would show would show uh, um, you know how this stuff how this stuff floats out in in, in time, uh, and 
and I, I, I also want to have a, uh, a Gantt chart view. And I won't have the Gantt chart mm -hmm. view done in time for the demo, but that would be more of an internal view. And I would say, you, you know, it would be a standard Gantt chart view where you would have the various, uh, the various tasks um, arranged on a, on a timeline, but they would show the, the, the dependencies, and then down at the bottom would show the various resources and how they get used. You know, that mean, meaning like uh, um, uh, people's um, work time uh, yeah. as well as as well as, uh, um, I think I can figure out how to, the Gantt charts usually don't show materials, but I, I think I can figure out how to put the materials in there as well. Uh, uh, so, so, so these are the kinds of views, you know, it's what, what I have in mind at this point is to do um, uh, several different representations of the data <laughs> that's in the database. Um, and then you're going to figure out over time, you know, uh, 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 I, I want to give you several re different representations to start out with because I don't know what's going to be useful to you in, you know, in all cases, and I don't think you do either. Yeah. So it's like, so it's like, okay, here are some things, okay, now we'll, fit, we'll work with them for a while, and we'll figure out, okay, what, what is useful and what is not useful, and then maybe, uh, or maybe what would be useful if we changed it some, if we added or subtracted or, you know, mm -hmm. or maybe there was some other view that people could think up that w might be even more useful. Um, but I, I think there's, there's, a, there's a whole um, field of, that's called situated design. And situated design is like uh, you have to look at it from the viewpoint of the people in the situation who are doing the work in the environment that they're working on, and that would be like in your lab. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are there are uh, one of the lessons from situated design is that there's there are there are some things that work better on the wall and not in a computer you know it's physically in the space you know and that's what I'm saying is like if I was trying to do priority management in your space and everybody's working in the same lab I would put something big up on the wall and say today's priority yeah you know and don't you forget <laughs> it, it, it you, you know so there's but there's there's things that people do in the space that that might come from the data in the computer but but they're they're but because they're on the wall, they have this different psychological effect. Yes, now you yes. could do this, you know, like with a big screen up on the wall. You know, people do that kind of stuff. But 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 a, a lot of times, if it's like if it's like there's a like a schedule board in a manufacturing environment or a construction environment that's on the wall is like this social meeting place. Mm -hmm. and everybody stands in front of it and they horse trade and they say, oh, my priority is bigger than your priority. <laughs> you know? and, and, and so, and so, so you, you, I think that you will find this, that, that, that there are things that you have to do in your physical environment you know the the, it, the 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 computer's not going to do everything in terms of in yeah. terms of managing you know managing the people and the work all right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm i'm also thinking about the implementation of this because i see these different visuals as filters on something that already has all the details yes yes um, it does yeah okay. I've been yeah. playing with the, um, uh, you know, um, uh, the systems for building ontologies, uh, and there is this program made at Stanford University called um, Protege. Uh, is it Protege? Uh, no, it's. Um, I think it's Protege. Yeah. Um, and so you build your ontology with all the details and the, you know the, all, all the relationships uh, between uh, objects um, and and all the properties of the objects, and then. You can build these different views 
by selecting specific relationships. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes. And I had another feature that I think would be nice to have because Sensorica, I, I figure that it will be very dynamic and we will have, you know, when we talk about an ecosystem of products, um, it's basically designing products that fit into each other and, and the, there's a lot of, you know, uh, there's a high degree of modularity so you can actually replace one module by another one. So mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of interchange, you know. These are not just products that are defined top to bottom. Uh, these will be products that can be mixed and remixed together, okay? Yep. Uh, yep. Into yep. other products. So I think this the the the, the relationship between all these sub products uh, it's going to be quite dynamic. So it yep. would be nice to have product projects, okay, product, you know, dash projects, which are pro projects that lead to products, to have these things uh, as objects and then and then to set up, uh, you know, the, the relationship should be something that the user can input, you know, and change. Yep. So I think if, if it's hard-coded, uh, you know, that's not good. Because uh, none none of this stuff is hard coded. Okay, so the, we can the, go there. there. Yeah, there, yes, yes, and not not only that, but the 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 way that I'm, there is an ontology behind this. Okay, REA is an ontology. Mm -hmm. All right, I I probably sent you a link to the REA ontology document. Um, uh, the the um, it, it, I I'm also um taking things from, I used to work on ERP systems, so I, in particularly manufacturing systems, so I'm taking a lot of things from my background as in manufacturing systems. One of the, one of the problems with manufacturing systems is that the, it, it, it is the same problem that you're going to run into with your project parent and child relationships and sub-projects is, is those relationships are too uh, um, inflexible. So the way that I'm doing it is such that all of the all of the components can be will will ha will have flexible relationships. In other words, they will have a variety of play this 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 transducer. You, you know, um, the, the, this component could be used uh, in in as an input to these this list of other components, so you can specify oh, yeah. okay, what do we want to do this time? So it is always it is already that way. In other words, you can plug anything together according to whatever relationships you said it could go into, which okay. could be many. All right. Well, uh, uh, this this is a this is an interesting discussion. I I always wanted to have with you. Uh, and I hinted to it in, in one of my emails. So we're talking about parent-child relationship. That's one possible mm -hmm. relationship that we can have. Yeah. And my question was, what other relationships could we define and set between pro product projects? And yeah. let me give you another example of one that I think yeah. is very, very important. Um, sometimes you have synergy between projects. Mm -hmm. Which means that these projects don't necessarily go into the same product, and don't necess are not necessarily related uh, market-wise, but they're related process-wise. So let's say, for example, I do an experiment on uh, the joint type transducer, and I'm using a device that can also be used for the constriction transducer. And if I do this project in parallel it would save me time. If I do this experiment and characterization just for the joint time transducer and then finish it, record it, uh, and then two months later I come and do it for the, uh, uh, you know, do the, almost the same thing for the um, uh, constriction transducer, I would, uh, you know, lose some time. So sometimes there is, you know, projects that are not necessarily related market-wise, they could be related 
uh, process-wise, meaning that doing them in the same time saves you time, makes your work more efficient. You see what I'm saying? Uh, so uh, we could, oh, we could abs save this type of... Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Uh, the way that I could do that in the system now, but oh, this is a really great idea, by the way. I I, I love this. Okay, so the but 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 I but I can also do this. You know what what we've got right now is we have process types, and process types can be um um uh, uh, um in, can come in families. You know, so we could have like a process. In other words, in other words, you could say that you could say that two different processes basically have the same process type mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you, you know or, or they are in the same process fan so we can say there are similarities between processes so then then you'd have to say well, okay now we know we have these similarities between processes uh, uh, now what do we want to do with them but but yes in the in the relationships of objects in the system uh, we can Determine that they are the same process type. All right. Yes. Hello. Yeah, I'm still there. Okay. Uh, even in manufacturing, you know, sometimes you you make something and it makes sense to make something else, uh, just because you set up your chemicals and everything is spread on the table. You know, it just makes sense yep. to make the other thing too. Yep. Otherwise, yep. you lose time. Uh, so and, and you probably don't need it tomorrow, but you will certainly need it two weeks down the road, and you have it done already. You know, so I think it's very nice to have people, uh, you know, when they set up for an activity, just go there and interrogate the system. Hey, is there something that is, uh, you know, very close to what I'm doing today, so I can match them together, and mm -hmm. and that you know rises the the efficiency uh, level of our work. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. But now the question is, what other types of relationships uh, we would need to define, you know, and use to create different visuals? Okay. Um, well, that's a good one. Anything else come to mind at this point? No. <laughs> uh, well, we we will we will uh, 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 we will find them uh, as as we get into this stuff deeper. Okay, but uh, so uh, having said that, can we have that door always open so that we can we can come back and define new relationships? Sure, sure. Okay. Yes. So if we are aware of this possibility, we can actually p put it into the design. And it's already there. Users. Okay. It's perfect. Already, it's already there. Okay, that's very good. And 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 to the extent that it's not there, we'll add it. Okay, but, I, but I think sir, this is the, 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 yeah. There's a lot of flexibility in what you can relate to what right now. Yeah, because it will make a system that will basically evolve uh, based on different situations, based on uh, you know our growing knowledge about the system itself. It's an evolving system, basically. That we want to build. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Let me go back to my questions and let's see. Uh, oh, um, um, I, 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 I'm I'm trying to go back and forth in my mind between what you want for internal use and what we should try to put into this demo. Uh, for the demo right now, we got seven days, so oh. it's it's uh, uh, so there's a lot of features that you want for. Um, management for project management uh, uh, and materials management of that kind of things that that um, that we talked about that uh, will get done but probably I don't know that do you think they 
I don't think I can get any of that stuff done for the demo. I think that, you know the feature that I wanted to put in for the demo would be some kind of a simulation of of income distribution. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? You know, beyond what I got out there already, and I'll put some more data in the stuff that I got out there already. Okay. If there's things that you think should be added to the to the to the prototype for demo purposes, you know, let me know about that. that and that would include um, other views, or that would include. Um, more data and some of the views, you know, more objects. Um, um, I'd look for, for the the you know, or or substitute something for something else. Um, other uh, 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 otherwise, like like I'd, it seemed to me that this overview of the the, the overview. Um, Value network overview was going to be useful for demo purposes, you know, a, a, on a on an overview level, and and probably not so much for internal purposes. Does that make sense? What do you mean by value network overview? Uh, that's that's this value network diagram, this flow diagram. Okay. Resource flow diagram, you know, where you got oh. the. So, do, have you looked at that with the customers in there? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's in, and then so so I want to get I want to um, get rid of the 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 uh, um, the uh, lever and mirror and that kind of stuff and uh, um, put a bunch of the contributors out there. Um, the you know at least the active ones. Okay. Um, now should I put you know and that that will give that will give people on a demo the idea of like here's the network. You know you got all these contributors you know and they're making these products and they're going to these various customers and they have a pretty good idea of the of the uh, scale of the network so far. Does that make sense? I, I'm trying to understand. So you say let's focus on a on a simulation of the value equation. No, I, I, no, I'm value. saying two different things, and I think they're yes, getting yes, yes. confused. Okay, uh, one one is just to take this existing value network diagram. Okay, and and um, uh, add a bunch of the add the active contributors to it. Okay. Uh, and and I want to clean up some of the other you know some things based on what we talked about today as far as as far as what to put on the diagram, uh, and then the other thing would be uh, would be th that would be added you know um, would be a simulation of an income distribution. You know, which yeah. would be say, okay, here's this, here's some money, and it's gonna, it's, it's pretty, you know, it, it would be pretty close to what you already got in, um, in some of your spreadsheets, mm -hmm. but it would be in, it incorporated in this, in this system. You know, maybe I'll use this, so the, some variation on this value equation page that's in there already. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, I'm I'm still thinking about how to how to display it, but it seemed like that it seemed like that from the standpoint of people from the outside and wanting to figure out how this stuff works from a value accounting standpoint. That income distribution is a um, um, critical feature of the whole idea of a value network. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing that we. Uh... We need to showcase yeah. here, um, and that that is the core of everything. Because uh, even uh, you know uh, Frank from from Deloitte, he, this is what he's interested in to see how we do that value accounting, uh, and how do we mm -hmm. get from it to redistribution of revenue. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is the the most important thing, and then and then to show maybe just to show how we can dress this value accounting system with other things and connect it to, to other things. You know that. Um, help us, you know, manage the whole business side of it 
uh, in a distributed peer-to-peer -peer way. Uh, so you mm -hmm. have, you know, a reputation system. We don't have to show it, but at least, you know, mention it. Uh, how these things plug into this value system, uh, mm -hmm. materials management, uh, customer relation management, and so on. These things, we don't have to go into details. We don't have to simulate them, you know. If we have something, I think it's nice. But at least, you know, to talk about them and maybe show a diagram just to make them understand how this would fit into uh, the core. Um, I think everything should revolve around the value equation and value accounting. Because, okay. uh, and, and I'm, I'm not saying that uh, just like that, because I, I, I kind of sense... You know, having met uh, uh, Mai and 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 Frank, mm -hmm. uh, I sense that th th this is how their interest is structured. Okay, they want uh -huh. to see the value accounting and the value equation, and mm -hmm. then they want to understand how that fits into the the you know the the, the model that we have. You know, uh -huh. uh, being peer to peer and decentralized. Um, okay, but they don't have to see it all uh, now. You know. At least well, get a, yeah, a, an understanding yeah. and understand how, uh, you know, get a get a sense of the direction we're taking, yep. and maybe a sense of progress. You know, uh, okay, we met these guys a few months ago, and and where are they now? And you know, and and what is what is the direction they're taking? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, they they, they are it all now. You know, they'll they'll see some cleanup in. Um, uh, further refinement of what I got out there right now, and then, uh, and then uh, um, something you know, I'll get something going. My next step will get get something going on the on the income distribution, and then, uh, um, then I want to go over the whole setup of a demo with you sometime later this week. Yeah, we you know, like, for it, yeah, 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 to do a. Uh, like a, sort of like a trial run and see what we're missing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. So yeah. So but but I I have enough to do right now from what we've discussed today that uh, that I will stay busy. She's probably gonna ask you question about uh, questions about the um, uh, the protocol. You know the value exchange protocol that mm -hmm. that, that you're using. Mm -hmm. um, she's probably going to be, uh, you know, interested in that. Um, I mentioned it in, in in my last email to her. Um, so um, <clears throat> she's probably going to be also interested in network to network interface, uh, which is related to the growth model. Uh, you know, for every business, people are asking, "What is your growth model?" <laughs> you know, how do you want to grow Sensorica, and how do you grow uh, mm -hmm. ecosystem? You know, I think that's also uh, important questions for her. And and we touched on these topics uh, last time she was in the lab. So I know she has an interest in in this. You know, it's not just about a bunch of people in a lab. You know, how do you want to grow this thing? Yeah. How do you scale it? Yeah. The yeah, those those are the the um, the protocol is something that I've thought about. Um, there is a possible. There are there are some possible um, models, some start starting points to look at for protocol value exchange protocols. Um, there's um, they're, they're, they're all from the the um, um, they evolved out, out of what used to be called EDI or electronic uh, document interchange. <laughs> um, which I was involved in at some point, and then I worked on standards for taking that stuff into the internet age. There was a project called EBXML. It was a joint sponsorship between the United Nations and uh, 
a U.S. Uh, consortium called OASIS. And so I worked on that, and then there was an uh, ISO project uh, called Open EDI that I also worked on, uh, and uh, uh, then there is there is another Oasis project that I can't remember the name of right now, and these were all attempts to set up protocols for exchange between commercial companies. Um, and they're worth looking at. On the other hand, all of that stuff is just enormously, hopelessly complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, uh, one of the things that I worked on in that realm, I was in the room where uh, a company that's now defunct, uh, uh, BEA, which was like a server company, I think Oracle finally bought them, mm -hmm. Uh, I was in the room with their management, and this project that I was actually, I, my job for a while with one company was working on these various standards organizations, you know, for doing or standardizing this stuff. Although after a while, it became clear to me, you know, that that the standards organizations themselves were just another avenue of commercial competition, <laughs> you, you know. So 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 in this one. In this one, which was called B, I think it was what was it called? I can't remember what it was called right now. But anyway, anyway, um, the guy from BEA said the reason that this is designed the way it is is because Microsoft and IBM got together, and they determined that we will make this so complicated that we are the only people, the companies that can afford to implement it. <laughs> Putting a value. Yeah, and and I, I, in fact, I the first meeting of that group that I went to, IBM tried to get me uh, tried to get me kicked out, <laughs> and Microsoft said, no, no, let them be in. And so it was between Mike's, all the decisions were between Microsoft and IBM. If I, if Microsoft had 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 agreed to have me kicked out, I would have been gone. Mm -hmm. You know, I was working for a small company that was in the same sphere at the time. Uh, um, so you know, I was their guy sent to these to these meetings. Um, but at any rate, but at any rate, still, you, you know, so so you have to look at all this stuff, and you have to extract from it what is useful, and and simplify, 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 simplify. You you know, and and then and then you know make it so that so that it it's. Um, Useful for value networks that are not going to actually want to be in the business of 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 commercially competitive, unnecessary complexity. <laughs> um, so you know, but but there but there are you know so the protocol design is is going to be you know it's something that I've thought about a lot. You know, I understand all of these previous attempts to do it. Um, and uh, so we're going to have to, but but really it's going to come down to what is the next value network that wants to interchange, you know, and then we're going to all have to sit down and we're going to have to come up with something that will work for us all, you know, and 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 uh, and you know stay away from the hidden rocks and uh, and. Uh, uh, Bottomless pits of complexity. I think we have one uh, already. It's the value network that that designs the value network. That's that's and you know you work on on uh, the infrastructure. I think that's one that could interface with Transferica. <clears throat> now <clears throat> I'm putting. So my brother, he's uh, been involved with us and he's been doing all these 3D models and design. So mm -hmm. he's um, you know he's he's our product design <clears throat> uh, and. Um, I'm trying to put him on a path where he can actually create his own design value network. Uh, that's the you know the value in here. It's it's quite different. You know, it's it's just um, it's just design. It's it's information basically. It's not a product. And um, <clears throat> uh, so he might he might be the next one creating another value network, which focuses okay. on, on the open design basically. Okay. Have, okay. Have yeah. This is, we can design yeah. for you in an open in an open way. You know. Okay. Okay. I can go with that. 
So that can be another another case. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, okay. Those those are good ideas. All right. All right. We can okay. easily work out something between us. That <laughs> will work. Yeah. Takes takes a, takes a lot of the um, uh, of the uh, uh, meeting with a bunch of people you don't know. Uh, uh, some of those problems out of the out of the process. Well, you know the interest here, I think, is is the the close. In, you know the incentive to interface the close uh, relationship between these value networks. And if you, if they, if there are spin-offs of Sensorica, that you have this bond, you have this relationship already established. So, in the in the case of my brother, you know, he's been contributing as an individual, okay, doing product design uh, within the network. Now, mm -hmm. if that becomes a spin-off network, you know, uh, well, that relationship will continue. So. There will be value flowing from the beginning between these two networks. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yep. So you can test yep. the interface right away. You know, yep. you don't have to yep. wait for, you know, whatever network out there will be created to exchange some value with Sensorica. There, maybe there is no, yep. there is no match. You know, and you would have to force yep. it just to make a case and, uh, you know, a case study. But in this case, the case study is there because there's already value flowing between, you know, my brother and and the network, and if you spins off another network, that value will continue to, to be exchanged, you see? Right, great. <clears throat> so the interface can be designed and tested right away as, as we go. Okay. Okay, I'm with it. Yeah. Okay, so are there other questions for the... Um, what can I do, Bob? How can I... I mean, uh, you know, next week I'm going to be at uh, Phil's place. Uh, and in the lab I'm going to do some more experiments on the joint time transducer for the characterization. Um, I can carve some time because this meeting is approaching and uh, I'll be working on uh, some documents that might require from us um, and so what uh, what how can I help you know even your efforts in this I mean well we d we decided that we were focusing on the uh, demo uh, instead of the internal use right now yes so so if if Things, if ideas come to mind that that you know it would be good to have this in the demo. Uh, likewise, as I make progress on stuff and improve stuff, I will put it out on the on the web server, and I will ping you, you know, just to let you know that I did something and there it is. Um, okay, so this feedback loop should be closer for this week, yes, before the meeting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then and then at and then at some point now, wh when are you actually? Um, now the 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 meeting itself is on the fifteenth. Fifteen. Fifteen. I think it's six. Let me check. Sixteen. Fifteen. Sixteenth. I think it goes to eighteen. Eighteenth. Yeah. Uh, let me see. It's three days. Um, so let me go to calendar. Okay, so October. Okay, so it's, uh, yeah, not 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th. 16th, 17th, 18th. Yes. And I think my date is. Sixteen. That's Francois. He's going to talk about resources and finance. That's the sixteenth. So here's where we're going to talk about, you know, materials flows, resources, cash flows, and stuff like that. Finance. Um, I don't know how he's preparing for this, Francois. Mm -hmm. uh, wait a second. So. Marketing. Oops. Seventeenth. It's Francois. Seventeenth. Francois. And I think I'm going to be.
not fair for me. Uh, the fifth, the sixteenth. Wait a second. Sixteenth is about marketing. Seventeenth is about finance and resources. And eighteenth is about <coughs> something else. And I don't have the text here, but I have to dig uh, my emails to see. Um, okay. So. so so when when would you want to do to incorporate the value accounting software demo? Exactly, that's what I was thinking. So one way, uh, I think when we talk about finance and and resources, that would be one. Possibility. No, that's that's Franc Francoise. Yeah. And mine, it's probably the 18th mine, uh, where I talk about, uh, you know, the value network itself, the model, uh, how we want to grow it, uh, you know, how we, it's more, it's more into the organizational, uh, you know, aspects of Sensorica, human resources, how do we grow that, um, you know, how do we, setting place the infrastructure to support that growth and so on. So it's it's more about the model of value networks. I don't know if we uh, should include it there. It might it might be nice to talk about, you know, when we talk when we present the value equation it might be interesting to put it in the finance um, meeting, finance and resources meeting. You know, I think it fits very well there. Um, and yeah, it would fit. It would fit in both cases. Uh, uh, we don't have a lot as far as material flows yet. Uh, okay. We will have. We will have some on resources. Uh, it. 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 To some extent, it. I, it would fit more with when you're talking about value network as form of organization and such, because this is, you. You know. You know. I am an example of. The extension of your value network into basically is going to this other value network to create this software, uh, uh, which is going to be for your, you know. So I mean, it, it, the, the, yeah, no, there's a, there are, there are a bunch of angles that would go into there. Uh, you might be able to use the part aspect of the software demo in both of those presentations. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see I, see where I get we'll see where I get on the on the income distribution if that if that works out pretty pretty well for a demo. That's the yeah. next thing I'm going to do. That's the next thing I'm going to do. So I'll try to have that up and running as quickly as I can. It, I, I don't think we can. I don't think it's wise to do two demos. Uh, maybe one. It's, okay. It's it's good enough. Um, okay. Because if we break it into two, I'm sure when you do the first one, there's going to be questions asked that will, you know, bleed into the, ne the next one, you know, and what are we going to say? No, 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 we're going to talk about this tomorrow, you know? Once you do yeah. a demo, you know, there's all these questions yeah. coming up. So yeah. I think it, it's yeah. doing it in one shot because everything yeah. is so connected. Uh, yeah. It's the best way to go. I'm, 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 yeah, and, and, and I'm, I'm also thinking of uh, uh, Francois been somewhat connected to the software process, but you've been the person that's been most like most connected to it, and possibly b most ready to uh, do any demonstrations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything else on the agenda today, or? Oh, no, that's all I got. Okay, so let's keep these 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 uh, feedback loops tight this uh, week. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'll I'll try my best to. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh. So we have a meeting on. Have actually we have a meeting tomorrow. As they call it, Polytechnic. Um, okay. But then I I hope I'll stay. You know, either in Philip Labs and or or my lab close to a computer. Okay. Um, okay. Perfect. So I'll I'll do my best to. Uh, to give you feedback and to help, you know, design this demo that we're gonna do. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, All right. We'll I will. Touch. I will depart and. Uh,
we'll see if this uh, if this uh, recording came out yes. to be anything worthwhile. I'll send you a link. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. -bye.